the latest with Rob? I know you were hopeful that he'd be able to go tonight. He's out tonight. Still out for personal reasons. Um, and then Marcus as well. He was kind of, is he out of, is he out of protocols and reconditioning? Yes, exactly. Um, with Rob and this being your first childbirth as a head coach, how do you handle that situation? Is that something that, you know, is really up to him? Yeah, you, you, you're sensitive to it, obviously. Um, you know, the morning of it, you text me the morning of our last game. And so you knew it was coming. And then, you know, it's a, it's an issue that you, you, you understand, you know, the time spent that then it needs to be spent. And so uh, when the players are ready, we're very sensitive to that. And, you know, every situation is different. And so uh, we've been in constant communication and another game is what he needs. So he gets. Thank you. to the trades official now um, with, with Wancho, why do you think uh, he wasn't quite able to, to get a spot in this rotation? And also you seem like a guy that was always like on the bench, like Curran and guys, what do you think about the way he handled it as a player who'd you know, been playing 20 minutes a game for the last few years for teams? Yeah, I know it was tough. We've had, you know, conversations with him as well as some of the other younger guys that haven't been playing as much. So uh, we, you know, I've talked to them throughout the year about staying ready. And to your point, I love his uh, approach, uh, the work he continued to put in and him being professional and, and, and sharing on the guys. Like you said, uh, I think um, it's a tough situation. One of the toughest as coaches is finding minutes for everybody. And, you know, honestly, it was nothing, like I said about Peyton, nothing that he didn't do. It was more so uh, what Grant did do, you know, early on um, shooting the ball and, and some of the defensive things. And then at times we just, you know, gone with smaller lineups and, Romeo and some of those guys. So um, hopefully for him, it's a, it's a better situation where he can have a better opportunity. And like I said, we, we talked about it as a team today and, you know, we'll wish him well going forward. And obviously PJ's out for the year, but there's a chance Bull could be back and join you guys. What uh, do you kind of want to just get a look at him and, and kind of see if he could be a contributor sometime? Or... Yeah. He's an intriguing young player as well as PJ, but um you know, that could possibly join us in the next few months. And, you know, I've seen him quite a bit at Oregon um, before he got hurt there and playing with Peyton. And so um, know, know, know about him, intriguing guy that could do a lot of things, obviously. And um, he's a guy that, you know, he's a restricted free agent, so we can retain his rights and get a good look at him over the next few months. Coach, just with um, back to smart, the reconditioning for him, what does that entail and, and just kind of reevaluating when he will be able to go? Yeah, it's just uh, ramping up the workouts uh, where he's comfortable enough to, to play in our game. Obviously, there's the shooting aspect or, or getting work in, but uh, without practice time to actually get some reps in and possibly some three on three, uh, him just coming back, he didn't really do anything for the last week or so. And so um, it's a personal thing or some guys, hit the ground running, as you saw Giannis against us coming out, played 40 minutes or whatever, but other guys need more time. And so uh, you're sensitive to that. You'd last thing we'd want is to rush somebody back and then get hurt in that first game back, you know, hamstring or whatever the case may be. And so uh, we take our time with that. We've gone through enough this year and other guys will step up until he's back. Hey coach, I just Hello. want to ask about Al Horford and being back here in Boston for him, I know it wasn't the most pleasant time in, in Philly and OKC. I know you were with him with the Sixers. So yeah. how happy is he here and what does he mean to you and the team? Oh, he's been great. Uh, you know, I talked about his veteran experience and, and the voice, uh, not, not only what he does on the court, but in the locker room. Um, and you saw the motivation uh, early in the season, him coming back in tremendous shape. And, and what he's done for us has been, you know, invaluable as far as the, the voice and the consistency on the court. Um, you know, he checks a lot of boxes for us on both ends and a lot that goes unseen on the stat sheet. So, um, you know, some guys, he falls in the bucket of guys not shooting his best right now on, on his, on the year, it's up to his career numbers, but he does so many other things out there. Um, and, you know, we all believe that'll get going as well. I want to follow up on <laughs> that. Making a move. Okay. Uh, I want to follow up. You said you mentioned the trade to the guys today. What was that conversation? What's the message this time of year? Yeah, it's, it, excuse me. It's part of the part of the deal that a lot of guys have been through. Um, you know, we do have some younger guys, but for the most part, you know, whether it's Josh Al, Dennis, whoever it is, you know, they've something they've been through. Part is 
Um, take it as a compliment that people are asking about you, but also we have to continue what we're doing because I mean, it's like 90% of the stuff that you hear doesn't happen anyway. And so we all wish uh, Wancho well and we'll miss him, but um, what we have here is what we have until further notice. And, and part of being a professional is playing through that. And I think uh, enough of them have been through the situation where it just goes in, in one ear, out the other. And then finally, this Hornets team, um, very well at moving the ball and I mean, top five in offense. What are the challenges? Yeah, it start, starts with the uh, transition. Our number one fast break team in the league. Uh, we talked about our last three games, uh, Chicago being number eight and um, New Orleans being number five. So we were kind of prep prepping up for this, um, but they take it to another level, makes or misses, playing extremely fast and long outlets from ball and some of those guys. So that'll be the challenge tonight, starting with transition. Um, but they have five or six guys averaging around 15 or plus a game. And so... Mm -hmm. They come at you in waves, and 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 we gotta obviously be ready to guard individually, which we kind of hang our hat on. And um, from there, the ball movement is it's it's you know very evident on tape when you watch them. Uh, they enjoy playing together, have very unselfish guys, and a lot of aggressive guys. So uh, the challenge starts with transition, but individual defense is what we kind of hang our hat at. We base all of our switching on that, and have to be on point tonight. Thank you. Wrap it up right there. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.